بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر ویورز آئی ایم پروفیسر ڈاکٹر محمد عثمان اینڈ ان دس ویڈیو وی ول لرن اباؤٹ دا فیزیالوجی آف اسمیل اور الفیکشن سو دس از دا آؤٹ لائن آف ٹوڈیز ویڈیو اینڈ لیٹ اسٹارٹ بیسکلی الفیکٹری فنکشن از ویری امپورٹنٹ اینڈ اٹ از سیٹ ٹو بی اے مارکر فار مارٹیلٹی ان اے ریسرچ اسٹڈی آف اوور تھری تھاؤزینڈ پیپل Uh, which were aged between 57 to 85 years 39 percent of these people were with anosmia that is loss of the sense of smell and these 39 percent people were dead within five years compared to the 10 percent with normal sense of smell the conclusion is that the smell function is linked to the health and well-being uh, smell is uh, basically least understood of our senses partly because the sense of smell is a subjective phenomenon now let's see what are the primary sensations of smell uh, these are uh, camphoraceous musky floral peppermintry ethereal pungent and so on uh, basically smell is detected by the uh, these olfactory cells which are present in the olfactory epithelium and this olfactory epithelium it, it lies in the superior part of each nostril uh, having a surface area of about 2.4 cm square in each nostril this olfactory epithelium is here it has uh, olfactory cells as you can see in this figure so uh, these are the olfactory cells which are present in the olfactory epithelium and uh, clearly it is visible that these are bipolar cells derived from the cns and these are spread among the sustentacular or sporting cells the number of these bipolar cells olfactory cells is about 100 million then each cell uh, each of these olfactory cell it has from 4 to 25 olfactory cilia which project into the mucus okay these cilia they project into the uh, mucus as you can see in the bottom of this figure and uh, this mucus is covering the olfactory epithelium uh, basically these cilia they react with the odorant molecules in the air and stimulate the olfactory cells uh, now let's discuss uh, what is the mechanism of stimulation of olfactory receptors uh, now before that for a substance to be smelled Uh, that is the odorant molecule it must possess three properties it must be volatile it must be at least slightly water soluble and it must be at least slightly lipid soluble uh, so as you can see here this is an olfactory bipolar cell and uh, these are the cilia of this olfactory cell which are projecting into the mucus so uh, this is the enlarged view of one uh, uh, cilium okay this is the enlarged view of the one cilium of olfactory cell so let's see how it is stimulated uh, first of all the odorant molecule okay the odorant molecule it uh, comes in contact with the mucus it passes through the mucus and it binds with the g protein coupled receptor okay the odorant molecule it binds with the g protein coupled receptor which is present in the membrane of each cilium now this causes uh, activation of cyclic amp second messenger system and cyclic amp then it causes opening of sodium channels so there is sodium influx now this sodium influx uh, it causes the uh, potential membrane potential of olfactory cell to change from minus 55 millivolts to minus 30 millivolts or less so in this way Uh, the we can say that uh, depolarization occurs in the olfactory cell uh, action potential pass through the olfactory nerve at the rate of about 20 to 30 impulses per second uh, please remember that the frequency of olfactory impulses is directly proportional to the log of the stimulus strength uh, the membrane potential inside the unstimulated olfactory cell is about minus 55 millivolts uh, and at this potential most of the olfactory cells they generate continuous action potentials at the rate of once every 20 seconds to 2 to 3 impulses per second okay uh, so 
let us see how the these impulses they reach the area of detection that is they reach the cortex. So, we are talking about the olfactory pathway. So, as you can see short axons ok, short axons these are the olfactory cells and the short axons of the olfactory cells they pass through perforations in the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. This is, this is the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone and these axons of the olfactory cells they are passing through the perforations in the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone upward to enter the olfactory bulb ok. This is the olfactory bulb in the cranial cavity. These axons they end up in these glomeruli ok. These are the glomeruli in the olfactory bulb. Each glomerulus probably responds to a different odor or smell. Now, each olfactory bulb has several thousand glomeruli and each glomerulus it receives about 25,000 axons from olfactory cells ok. I repeat each as you can see here each axon sorry each glomerulus it receives about 25,000 axons from olfactory cells. Uh, the olfactory bulb also contain periglomerular cells ok, periglomerular cells which are around the glomeruli uh, and these periglomerular cells they are inhibitory neurons connecting one glomerulus to the other. Probably they are involved in the lateral inhibition function. Now, coming back to the glomerulus ok, this glomerulus in which the axons of the olfactory cells uh, they are coming. So, these axons of the olfactory cells they synapse with the dendrites of 25 large mitral cells ok, this is a mitral cell. So, they make connections with the uh, dendrites of 25 large mitral cells, mitral cells and 60 small tufted cells ok. Uh, now, the axons of the mitral cells and tufted cells they form the olfactory tract as you can see here these are the axons of mitral cells and tufted cells and they basically form this olfactory tract. So, this is the olfactory tract or you can say the second order neurons in the olfactory pathway. So, uh, olfactory tract enters the brain and it divides into as you can see here it divides into two pathways. The one pass pathway passing medially ok it is uh, passes to the medial olfactory area, it passes to the medial olfactory area and the other it passes laterally to the lateral olfactory area or primary olfactory area. Uh, the medial olfactory area it consists of a group of nuclei located anterior to the hypothalamus ok, the medial olfactory area this one it consists of a group of nuclei located anterior to the hypothalamus. So, this is the medial olfactory area. Its most important part is septal nuclei which send impulses to the hypothalamus and other primitive portions of the limbic system. The function of this medial olfactory area uh, basically it is concerned with the basic olfactory behaviors like uh, licking the lips like salivation and other feeding responses caused by the smell of the food. Now, let us talk about the lateral olfactory area. So, this is the lateral olfactory area and it is composed of the pre pyriform and pyriform cortex and cortical portions of the amygdala. This area is the only area of the entire cerebral cortex where sensory signals pass directly to the cortex without passing first through the thalamus. From this area impulses pass to almost all portions of the limbic system especially to the hippocampus ok, especially to the hippocampus. Many impulses from this area also pass to an older part of the cerebral cortex which is called the paleocortex and it is located in the temporal lobe. This lateral olfactory area is involved in liking or disliking certain foods depending upon one's experiences with them. Uh, hippocampus and memory play a vital role in this function. Then this area is also involved in aversion to foods which have caused 
nausea or vomiting again limbic system and hippocampus are definitely involved then this area is also involved in some olfactory conditioned reflexes a newer uh, newer olfactory pathway it passes through the dorsomedial thalamic nuclei and then it passes to the orbitofrontal cortex and this area is involved in the conscious analysis of the odor okay this area is involved in the conscious analysis of the odor this is called the newer pathway uh, please note that we can discriminate between some 10000 different odors even though we have only 1000 or so different olfactory receptors type and these are encoded by 500 genes because different odors or smell they elicit different patterns of electrical activity in the cortex so this was all about the sensation of smell uh, thank you for watching this video please subscribe to this channel stay blessed and allah hafiz